thank you guys for uh, showing up. And, okay, what did we finish up at? We're at the, uh, oh, marijuana. <laughs> Item E, hearing <laughs> pertaining to placing a moratorium on the outdoor cultivation of medical marijuana. Police Department. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Right. The purpose of this uh, interim urgency ordinance places the moratorium outdoor cultivation of marijuana in the city of Fresno. Absent this ordinance, marijuana cultivation could occur in the city of Fresno without any specific regulation and pose a hazard to the citizens in this community. The cultivation and distribution of marijuana is a national concern. According to the Drug Enforcement Administration, 72% of all the marijuana grown in the United States is grown in California. So that's, that's significant. And each pound of processed marijuana costs probably about $75 to be processed by a grower. That same processed pound of marijuana can be sold in states within the country for an average of five to six thousand dollars so it generates considerable profit each pound also yields 454 grams of uh, processed marijuana and the dosage amounts when you're looking at the prescriptions that are provided to uh, medical marijuana users is usually about uh, one half of a gram which is what is commonly rolled into a marijuana cigarettes. So if you look at one pound of marijuana, that's 908 doses for an individual. And in order for the um, prescription to uh, not reach the federal prosecution level, it has to be under 100 pounds of uh, 100 plants. And most prescriptions are written right at 99 plants. According to Lieutenant Rick Coe, who leads the Fresno uh, County Sheriff's Department's abatement efforts on uh, marijuana, the valley floor has exploded in outdoor marijuana cultivation operations. Historically, large-scale marijuana grows were found in the foothills of Fresno County. In uh, 2009, the Fresno County Sheriff's Department abated 81 large-scale marijuana operations which seized hundreds of thousands of marijuana plants. In 2010, the Fresno County Sheriff's Department only found 19 plants. And then this year, year to date, they only found eight. But what they've seen is a, is a huge number of grows on the valley floor in the outlying county and in the city of Fresno. In 1996, California voters approved the um, Compassionate Use Act, which legalizes um, marijuana use and cultivation under certain um, circumstances. However, the Senate found some ambiguity uh, within that Compassionate Use Act, and in 2004, the Senate passed Senate Bill 420, which provided guidelines and attempted to clarify the number of plants and the amounts of processed marijuana an individual could legally possess and use for municipal purposes. Also, the Senate Bill 420, it provided authority to municipal cities and counties uh, to govern and regulate outdoor cultivation of marijuana. The Fresno County uh, also has an ordinance in place right now which prohibits outdoor cultivation, and nothing in this this temporary ordinance violates any of the provisions of the 1996 Compassionate Use Act nor the 2004 Senate Bill 420. What we're asking this body today to do is to pass the temporary ordinance which will enable uh, the City of Fresno, the City Attorney's Office, and the Fresno Police Department an opportunity to research the complexities of marijuana cultivation and also carefully craft a permanent ordinance which 
balances the needs of an individual who has a municipal marijuana card with the opportunity to legally possess, use uh, medical marijuana, and provide safety for the citizens within our community. And at this time, I'm going to ask Lieutenant Newton to proceed with the PowerPoint presentation. Good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant David Newton. I'm the commander in charge of the Special Investigations Bureau. That involves your vice unit, Intel, Major Narcs, Methamphetamine Task Force, uh, plus I manage a human trafficking grant. Uh, over the past three years, the Fresno Police Department Major Narcotics Unit has responded to dozens of marijuana cultivation sites, such as the one you see here in the city limits. This particular site is located at Armstrong in California. This location actually consisted of 10 individual sites consisting of almost 10,000 marijuana plants. Lieutenant, really, really, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this. All that green is marijuana? Is, is it, it was marijuana. It was. A lot of it's been ripped. A lot, about over 50% has been harvested. That's correct. Armstrong in California, this is in the city. The city limit starts right at California. This is in the city limits. I'm going to, correction, was in the city limits. It's been harvested now. Notice how close those residents are on the north side and to the west of the uh, grow. When the plants are ripening, it emits a distinct skunk smell, which permeates that entire neighborhood and attracts theft. Unfortunately, some of the thefts have resulted in injury or death, not necessarily at this location, but at other locations I'm about to show you. If you look carefully at the photos, notice the tents or small structures in the grows. The presence is simple. By living in the plants, the growers are able to protect their grows from theft. Based on my experience, many, if not most, of the persons who live in grows like this are armed with firearms. Marijuana is a valuable commodity. Many growers will do whatever they can to protect their profits. So what you see is a legal grow with each grower allowed up to 99 plants. It's kind of hard to see, but there are blue and black tarps around the grows to shield the plants from passing traffic. Actually, when you're in a helicopter like I was when I took the photo, it makes it kind of easy to spot the grows. I took this photo about two months ago. As you can tell, the harvest is about 50% in at that time. This grow and other photos you will see are currently considered legal. Major narcotics officers had responded to all of these sites I'm about to show you and confirmed the growers were in possession of a legal medical marijuana certificate. By the way, um, we're talking about the cultivation, not the use or not the consumption of marijuana um, for, this, for our purposes. So this grows at Jensen and Sherry, and I'm going to show you another slide that's a little bit closer for the view I want you to see on the marijuana, but I want to point something out that was interesting in this photo. After I took the aerial photos from the helicopter, I checked my position on Google Maps to confirm street location, and to my surprise, Google had updated their maps. It's kind of hard to see, but if you look at the lower right corner of that photo, you're going to see 2011 Google. This photo can be accessed on the internet, not just by council or folks in the audience, by pretty much everyone. So this is a close-up of the previous photo, and you can see the tents. There's two green tents and a blue tent in the grow. It's not because they enjoy the outdoors. It's to protect their grow. As you can see, marijuana plants have a distinct profile. After you do this a few times, it's not difficult to distinguish marijuana plants from other vegetation. All right, this photo is an area of central Fresno. This is just south of McKinley. This is on Floridora between 5th and 8th Streets. These three grows are within a quarter mile of each other. Again, Fresno Police de Detectives visited these sites, and these grows are legal. So this grow is located on 8th, just north of Floridora. As you can tell, some of the plants have been harvested. This house is just down the street. It's also on 8th, but it's now it's south of Floridora. Marijuana plants are growing among the existing fruit trees and other trees. Finally, this grow is located on the corner of 5th and Pine. So imagine living in this neighborhood during harvest and smelling this every moment of the day. 
Imagine trying to enjoy your backyard with your family and friends, knowing that at any moment violence could erupt a few yards away. Look very carefully. You'll see the two small swimming pools located in the adjacent yard. It's not hard to imagine a scenario where suspects attempt to rip, the owner defends their grill with the firearm, and you have an innocent child living nearby who's injured or killed. This is what a legal posting looks like. This person stapled it to their fence. In spite of privacy laws related to HIPAA, the notice is posted openly. This photo is the same notice, but what I did is I did a close-up. Kind of hard to see at the top of the picture. It's in orange or kind of red, but it says 99 plants and 6 pounds of dry bud as, ed as edible. So what's a pound of marijuana? That's a pound. That's a pound of dried marijuana. It's kind of hard to see, but my two size 12 feet are on either side of it to give you some perspective. So a typical joint's three quarters of a gram. Uh, 20, 30 years ago it was a quarter gram, but they've grown since then. THC content is a, used to be a little over 3%, now it's over 10. So the joints are three times bigger and three times stronger. That one pound right there, that will make 600 joints, three quarters of a gram each. The new strain of marijuana plants that we're seeing, the female-only clone plants, they produce three to five pounds of dried bud. So your average plant yields 1,800 to 3,000 joints, and a 99 plant grow, which I showed you on the first photo, it will yield 180,000 to 300,000 joints. Therefore, many people, I'm sorry, most people in law enforcement believe that marijuana grows are nothing more than profit-making schemes. Marijuana production requires little investment and produces large profits. It costs about $75 a pound to grow. That's not counting land lease costs. And it can be sold for up to $6,000 a pound on the wholesale level, depending upon the quality of the marijuana and the location sold. Therefore, there's significant interest in developing illegal but highly profitable interstate marijuana distribution rings from California to the other 34 non-medical use states. This is what our East Coast residents pay for <coughs> marijuana. And if you look at District of Columbia at $460 an ounce, that comes to uh, over $7,000 a pound. $75 to produce, you're selling it for over $7,000 a pound. So what's the result? The result is a public threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of Fresno. There have been numerous reports of violent incidents associated with the cultivation of marijuana. We've had five shootings in the last two years, and unfortunately, one of those shootings did result in the death of a person who attempted to steal marijuana plants. And that occurred, uh, if you remember, across from Playland, where the paddle boats on Lake Washington are located. This is the shooting location where the one person was killed. To the north of Belmont, you see the amusement rides where families like to gather. Upper left corner of the screen, there's Lake Washington and the paddle boats. I outlined in red where the marijuana grow was. The shooting itself actually occurred on Belmont, just on the northern edge of that red line. Based on anecdotal evidence received from narcotics and in my intelligence uh, unit, there's been numerous marijuana-related thefts and physical confrontations between growers and suspects, but they go unreported. As a result, marijuana growers are constantly vigilant with many possessing handguns or rifles. The chance of an innocent victim who lives near a marijuana field and being injured by a stray gunfire is high. There is sufficient evidence that marijuana cultivation attracts a considerable amount of non-residents who by following the scent, and it is strong. In fact, when I was in the helicopter, I'm up 1, 2,000 feet. I could smell it very clearly. I knew when we were over a grow. And it, allows, it attracts folks who drive or walk into these neighborhoods in search of marijuana cultivation sites. As stated previously, marijuana-related threats and conflicts involving the growers and their neighbors continue to escalate. The unregulated cultivation of outdoor marijuana close to residents and schools, it poses a current and immediate threat to public health, safety, and welfare. That's the reason why we're here today. In 2010, we received 52 complaints of our narcotics hotline specifically re complaining of the strong odor of marijuana and increased pedestrian vehicular traffic. This year we received 198. Um, if we don't, if the council doesn't take action on this, I'm assuming it may double next year. I, it, 
It doubled, it's doubled once, it may double again. School administrators have complained of students as the, after walking by marijuana fields of smelling strongly marijuana. So the proposed interim urgency ordinance you have before you enacts a temporary prohibition of outdoor cultivation of marijuana in all districts in the incorporated areas of the city of Fresno. Uh, the department intends to seek a permanent ban through an amendment to the municipal code. Nothing contained in the proposed interim urgency ordinance you have before you conflicts with federal laws enumerated in the Controlled Substances Act, nor does it permit any activity that's prohibited under that act. Nothing in the proposed ordinance can be construed to allow persons to engage in conduct that endangers others or causes a public nuisance, allows the use of marijuana for non-medical purposes, or allows any activity related to cultivation, distribution, or consumption of marijuana that would be considered illegal. The proposed ordinance is determined to be category exempt from CEQA, and as this is an emergency ordinance, a supermajority of five affirmative votes will be required for adoption. Thank you. Is there anyone for the public?